Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for December 7th, 2020. Now, all year this year, I've been teaching you guys on faith and patience, right? And so I, we did a series on the life of Joseph, and uh, a lot of people were blessed. And then now we're in the middle of a series on the life of David. And in this series, we're at part 78. This, this series is called Greater is Coming. The whole point is that if you become, if you are dedicated to dying to self, giving up your selfish desires, yielding to the Father, discovering your purpose, and then deploying into your assignment, right? Dedicated to do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, however he tells you to do it, then greater is coming for you because it will be the life that God destined for you to have. So this is Greater is Coming, part 78. The title of today's message is Life After the Blessing. Life After after the blessing. Let's talk about it. Before I get too deep into the message, um, I want to let you know that I'm going to wind down the this series this week and next week. I'll be closing out the year next Friday, December 18th, and then we'll shut it down for the year, take a break for Christmas, uh, pray, spend some time with the Lord concerning what we're going to teach on next year. Uh, but as I get into this message for, for today, I just want you to know that this week and next week, we're going to wind this down and then we'll close it out next Friday. So today I'm covering 2 Samuel chapter 8, the whole chapter. When you get a chance, go to 2 Samuel chapter 8 and read that chapter, but I'm going to summarize it for you today. You ready? All right, here we go. So after having prayed the prayer of praise and thanksgiving, remember the, the message from Friday? David prayed this prayer of praise and thanksgiving, and then he prayed a prayer of agreement, right? And after he did all of that, then the Bible says basically that he found himself in a bunch of fights. Now, this was not uncommon at the time as far as nations fighting against nations. It was, it was very common because unlike today where there are democracies, um, back then they were monarchies. And so the way that monarchies advanced was through fighting, conquering. And so they had to take land. And so David, once he became the king of the unified Israel, and once he gave God the prayer of praise and thanksgiving, and once he came in agreement with God with the declaration of faith, and he gave God the prayer of agreement, now he's ready to expand the kingdom, right? So in this moment, in this chapter, David led Israel to defeat the Philistines by conquering Gath, their largest city. The king, David then, led uh, his army against the Moabites, and he destroyed them too. And then he destroyed the forces of Hadi, Hadadezer, uh, the son of Rehob, the king of Zobah. And when Hadadezer marched out to strengthen his control uh, 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 along the Euphrates River, David saw them and destroyed them. And so the Armenians came from Damascus to help Hadadezer. And when the Armenians came, the Bible says that David and his men killed 22,000 of them. And so then they took over Damascus. And now Damascus the, and the Armenian capital became part of David's kingdom. And so all of these people, as they're going, the Moabites, the Philistines, right? The Armenians, they are now subject to David. David is expanding. And the Bible says, so the Lord made David victorious everywhere he went. Who made David victorious? It was God. You are not a self-made man. You are not a self-made woman. You're a God-made man. You're a God-made woman. And when after all of this fighting, when King Toy of Hamath heard that David had destroyed Hadezer, he was like, yes, because he didn't like that guy. He was always fighting against that guy. So he came, uh, he sent his son Jorab to congratulate King David for the successful campaign. And uh, because they were always fighting. And Joram uh, presented David many gifts. The Bible says gold and silver and bronze. And David had a lot of stuff already. So David, the Bible says that David took the gold and the silver and the bronze and all the stuff that he had won in all the other battles. 
And then he presented those things as gifts unto the Lord. He provided them as an offering unto the Lord because he was saying the Lord is making all of this happen. And then the Bible says David became even more famous when he returned. After all of that, then he destroyed 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. And so he occupied Edom and then the Edomites became David's subjects as well. And then again, the Bible repeats this line, and the Lord made David victorious everywhere he went. And then towards the end of the chapter, the Bible says, David reigned over all of Israel and did what was just, and he did what was right for all of his people. So he was a leader. He was leading. He was being led of God. He was expanding his kingdom. He was conquering, and he was doing what was right in the sight of his people. What does this mean for you today. You're like, man, Rick, this is crazy. These stories about all of this fighting and wars and all that. What does that have to do with me today? I, I got you. I got you. So I have two major points to share with you this morning. And then the second point has a bunch of stuff in it. Uh, but as I get into these two points, I want you now to rid yourself of all distractions and open up your heart to receive. Now we're about to learn some things from that. You ready? All right. Two things. Here we go. Number one, look at me. You have to be prepared for life after the blessing that you say that you've been waiting for. And this is, this is unfortunate, but a lot of people, they, they say they're believing God. They're waiting on God. They're, they're trusting and believing. They're holding to God's unchanging hand. They're, they're doing what we learned this year in these series about faith and patience and all of that. And you keep saying that you're waiting on it. You're waiting on it. And, and I've taught on faith and patience this year, and I've taught you to hold on until you see what God said and all of that. And you say that you're doing that. But what happens after you receive it? Like, you must be ready to walk in the blessing once you get it. Because it's unfortunate, but many people find the strength to endure, the strength to endure, the strength to endure while they're waiting on what God said. But when they finally get it, though, then they don't know how to enjoy it. They don't know how to walk in it. And they don't know what to do what's next. And they, they experience like a tremendous letdown. Um, this is, you know, I want to be careful in what I'm about to say, but this is how, you know, you, you see like many rich people or famous people who spent their lives pursuing fame or money or, you know, they, they, they spent all their lives trying to get this thing. And then when they get it, they sit there in the mansion and they go, well, that's it. Like, I mean, now what do I do? Right. And, and, and it's like, if you don't know what to do next, if you don't know how to enjoy what you said you've been waiting on, um, then, yeah, this could lead to a lot of those people, unfortunately, commit suicide because now they're at the point where they, they realize that they were pursuing something that never really fulfilled them. And so in this year, like as we study Joseph, as we study David, what I like about both of those examples is you have Joseph who waited 20 years, David who waited 20 years, but Joseph waited 20 years for the dream to come to pass. And when it happened, what did he do? He experienced the best years of his life after the blessing, right? And so, so he, he, he operated as the prime minister of Egypt. He was a blessing to his family. He got his family out of where they were in the time of famine, and he, he, he blessed them richly. Why? Because he was able to receive the blessing and then open up his heart to whatever was next. David was like, okay, I waited 20 years to become the king of Israel. Now I'm the king of Israel. What do I do now? Okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do. And I will expand. And so instead of looking at the blessing, look at me. Let me say it this way. You're waiting on something. You're waiting on something big. You're believing God. You're believing and receiving. You're decreeing and declaring. You have faith and patience. You're going you're gonna to say what God said until you see what God said. I got it. I've been there, all of that. I got you, I got you, right? But when you finally get it, don't see it as a destination. See it as a starting point. See it as like, okay, now I got that. Okay, now what's next, right? See, life is a series of times and seasons, levels and stages. I've told you that many times. Once again, life is a series of times and seasons, levels and stages. And so, yeah, maybe you maximize this stage, guess what? There's another stage. Maybe you got to the end of this level. Guess what? It's time to level up. There's another level, right? Maybe you, maybe this time or this season has come to an end. 
guess what? There's another time. There's another season. And so, so as you're living out your life and you're believing God and you're going to stand firm until God does what he said he's going to do in your life, all of that is great. But once you get there, you got to keep your heart open to the Holy Spirit for what's next. Because unless the Lord calls you home, you still have things to do in this world. So David was like, what's next? And whatever was next, he was like, okay, I'm ready to expand. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to advance. I'm ready to, to do whatever it is that you want me to do. He expanded the kingdom of Israel. It was pleasing in God's sight. He was a blessing to his people. And all of this happened after the blessing. Say amen to that. All right, number two. I only have two points for you this morning. Uh, but this second point has a bunch of sub points. You ready? All right, number two. Uh, so here are seven things that we can learn from David in 2 Samuel chapter 8. I'm going to give you seven quick things and then we'll close it out. All right, you ready? Number one, kingdoms expand through conquering. In David's day, obviously this was a physical thing, right? They physically fought and they physically expanded, but today is spiritual. God wants us to expand and advance his kingdom. And unfortunately, I think that people don't understand there's a difference between the church and the kingdom. Church is where you go to learn about the kingdom. <laughs> and so, so in church, we're, we're worshiping God, we're receiving insight, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding, we're being taught from uh, the fivefold ministry gifts, all of that is great. But then when you leave church, you got to go expand the kingdom. And the kingdom is supposed to advance, it's supposed to expand. We, as born-again believers, are supposed to affect with effects and influence the people of the world and the systems of the world. So we're supposed to affect the people that are in a system and then impact the whole system. And we're supposed to do that through advancing. This is spiritual, right? And, and just know, number two, victories will not always come without a fight. Now, one, one of the things that I don't understand with, with, with Christians is that a lot of believers declare openly, I'm an overcomer. Say, I'm an overcomer. All right? They say, oh, I'm an overcomer. But how can you be an overcomer if you don't have anything to come over? <laughs> right? At the end of the day, uh, if you're going to fight the good fight of faith, that means that you're still in a fight. You got to understand that sometimes things are not going to come without a fight. And just because there's a fight doesn't mean that God doesn't want you to fight. You have to go take it. Sometimes things will be given unto you. Other times you have to go take it. If you want God's best, you have to be willing to fight for it. Number three, Facing opposition is not an automatic indicator that you are outside of the will of God. See, I don't know why people do this, but just because people are facing difficulties, challenges, adversity, obstacles, they go, well, I must have done something wrong. Maybe I'm outside of the will of God. No, maybe you're right smack dab in the middle of the will of God. David was doing the will of God. God was with him. He had to fight over and over and over again. Look at me. You're going to have to fight for your marriage. You're going to have to fight for your children, your finances, your career, your health. As a believer, you have to pray, believe, develop resolve, go after it, and you cannot quit. God will lead you to fight and to fight head on. Number four, whether you're facing natural or spiritual opposition, your resolve is to never give up, never cave in, never quit, right? So what, what the enemy does is he puts pressure on you. He knows that when God is on you, in you, with you, and for you, you're being led of the Holy Spirit. God is flowing through you. If God is flowing through you, then, then Satan can't stop you because at that point, stopping you would mean stopping God and God cannot be stopped. And so what, what Satan does is he tries to get you frustrated to where you give up, you cave in, you quit. Because if you throw in the towel, then Satan di didn't really stop you. You stopped you. But you stopped you because he got you frustrated. So as a born-again believer... You have to just develop the resolve, the resolve to say, you know what, the only way I can lose is if I quit, is if I succumb to the pressure. And the devil will crank up the pressure on you. Remember the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when the enemy was like, King Nebuchadnezzar said, hey, bow. And they said, we're not going to bow. And he said, well, crank up the heat seven times hotter. Now, that's ridiculous, right? Because he went from fire, level one fire, to level eight fire. Now, level one fire is going to kill you, right? I mean, so level eight fire, I mean, it's still going to kill you. That doesn't matter. But what the devil does is he cranks up the heat on you to see if you would change your confession. And, and after he cranked up the heat, he said, now what are you guys going to do? And they said, we're still not going to bow. So, so as a born again believer, the devil will crank up heat on you, but you can't change your confession. You can't give up. You can't gave, cave in. You can't quit. Number five, God will fight with you but he's not always going to fight for you. 
Let me be clear about that. There's sometimes where God goes before you and he opens doors for you that no man can close and closes doors for you that no man can open. And there's sometimes that God goes before you and he does things and he hands them over to you in a silver platter and he gives it to you by favor and he gives it to you by grace and you praise God and, and you tell your testimony in church. And that's great. I love it. But then there are other times where God says, no, now I'm going to go with you, but you still have to go fight. David had to do the fighting and God was with him. There's sometimes that God will do it for you. There are other times that God will do it with you. And so listen, if you're in the fight this morning, I don't know why I'm talking about so much fighting, but look at me. If you're in a fight this morning, then know that God is with you. And God is saying, listen, there's sometimes I'll do it for you, but I'm doing it with you this time. And I need you to go. I need you to, to believe God. I need you to, to say, you know what? I'm not going to lose. I refuse to lose. I refuse to quit. I'm not going to lose my children. I'm not going to lose my marriage. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose my business. I'm not going to lose. I am going to hold on until I see what God said. Say amen to that. Number six, greatness requires resolve. So it's not that people who, who accomplish great things in the kingdom. These are not people who don't face opposition. These are just p- people who r- refuse to quit, right? A- at the end of the day, the only way you can lose is if you quit. So just keep going. And then number seven, and finally, as I close, look at me so I, I can tell you this as I close. You have grace for it. You have grace for it. If you, were, if you didn't have the grace for it, you wouldn't be facing it. God is not going to allow you to face something that you can't handle. So the fact that you are facing it is a reminder that you have grace for it. Now you can say, you know what? As a matter of fact, instead of saying, whoa, is me. No, you could be like, whoa, it's me. Look at what God is trusting me with now. 10 years ago, this thing would have destroyed me. 15 years ago, I would have been crushed. But God, if you believe I can do this, if I'm facing it, it's evidence that you trust me with it. And so you are on me and in me and with me and for me. And so I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to cave in. I'm not going to quit. David kept going. He kept advancing. He kept conquering. More people came. They Giants, the more they lined up, the more he knocked them down. That's the mentality that we have to live with. Say amen to that. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for giving me the grace to fight. You have deposited greatness down inside of me. I know purpose and destiny are within me, waiting for me to unlock them and to walk them out by faith. I declare that I will. I will arrive at your desired destination for my life. I will become the man or woman that you have called, destined, designed, and desire for me to be. I will die empty, getting out of me, everything you placed in me, and I'll do it before I die. It won't always come without a fight. Because the enemy wants to stop me from attaining my purpose. But he won't. Because you are with me, Father. The only way I can lose is if I quit. And there is no quit in me. And when I receive the promise, the one I'm waiting for right now, I will not have a post-blessing letdown. I will open up my heart to whatever is next, because I know greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, click on the subscribe button, put in your email address, and you're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, go into this day knowing that there's life after the blessing. You know what's after that blessing? Another blessing. You know what's after that one? Another blessing. Times and seasons, levels and stages. Keep fighting, keep pressing. The best is yet to come. Do me a favor, leave me some comments in the chat if this uh, message has been a blessing to you and then share the message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. Go into this day and go into this week knowing that greater is coming for you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning.